Hello, this is Dr. Dale McKinney, and welcome back to the Promise Channel and our little talk with Dr. Michael McKinney myself. And we're going to talk from his book, Evangelism, the Responsibility of the Church in the 21st Century. And we kind of left off at chapter three. Yeah. And chapter three is all about the mandate. Yeah. And so let me just read this little um, paragraph. The term mandate means an official order or commission to do something. It is a directive, a command, or a charge given with authority to accomplish a mission. So our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave us a mandate 2,000 years ago. And what would you say? Is it still in effect today? Oh, I believe the, that the mandate that the Lord has given us and was given to the disciples is still very much relevant and um, there today for us to follow. Amen. Well, I yeah. think maybe our audience would like to know how did God call you into this kind of a ministry? Um, because we were pastoring a small church and right. first it was in El Monte and then it was in um, it was in El Monte most of the time, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. then one, one day we went to a Morsero's uh, meeting in San Diego and something happened. Something yeah. changed. Yes. Well, for years, you know, Adele and I pastored a, a small church in the area, and uh, we had um, been as faithful as, as we could be and pastoring the church. But I had we started attending some of the more Cirillo crusades and conferences when he came to the into the area, and uh, at that time, uh, God began to deal with my heart that there was something more that he wanted Adele and I to do in ministry, but we were not sure what it was he wanted us to do. So we began to go on a journey, a quest, to find out what it is really that God wanted us to do and what this mandate thing was all about. Hmm. I remember that when we were there at Marcelo's uh, encounter in San Diego. Um, before that, though, you had a, a, a vision from the Lord. Yes, yes, I had a encounter uh with the lord i, I this uh which uh, was a very uh life-changing experience for me I, I believe that something was happening god was beginning to move in my life and i began to feel that he had something uh, different something far different for us to do in ministry than we had ever done before so we were invited to a morris cirillo conference in san diego i'll never mm -hmm. forget and I was really, and I was seeking the Lord, and I and I was asking the Lord for a confirmation and to show me exactly what it is He wanted us to do. And I'll never forget the first day of the conference when we walked in the door. We were upstairs and, and going toward the elevator. The conference was just getting started, and out walks from the elevator Mrs. Cirillo, Teresa mm -hmm. Cirillo. We, as we recognized her, but <clears throat> we had never met her formally, and she didn't know us. So I began to introduce ourselves to her and told her how much we appreciated Brother Sorello and his ministry. And while I'm talking, she's looking, it's not at me, but like looking through me. And I wonder, wow, what, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. And uh, But remember, I had asked the Lord for confirmation. And all of a sudden, she stopped me in mid-sentence when I was talking. She says, you know, brother... Did you know, I'll never forget this, that you're called to preach the gospel around the world just like my husband? And then she went on. I tell you, as if somebody walked up and hit me right in the, in the stomach. I couldn't hardly fathom what had just happened. I was looking for confirmation. I go to this conference with expectation. And you know, when you, you go with, with expectation with the Lord, why things are going to happen. And on that very first encounter, the first day, that's what I was told by, of all people, Teresa Cirillo. That had a life-changing effect mm -hmm. on our life. I think uh, uh, you always had like a burning desire to do more for the Lord. Yes, always. But we weren't really exactly sure what we're going to do yeah. because we thought it was just a church setting. Yeah, we thought a typical pastor in the corner. I thought that's what that's what my father had done. He'd been a pastor and my mother. But uh, God had a different plan for our lives. You know, we're all called for the Lord to work in ministry, of mm -hmm. course. But there are different kinds of callings within the ministry. That's what we learn. Just like there's different gifts of the Spirit that are given to us to minister with. So uh, during this time when I began to feel this urgency in my heart to really find out what this desire, this burning 
something in our heart was building up that we're to do something different. So I so during the uh, the conference during the conference, uh, at, we were in the stayed in the hotel room and I I had uh, Adele was asleep already in bed. I was sitting up reading a, a, a magazine or something, a uh, Christian magazine, and all of a sudden I felt this envelopment come over me. And I felt like something's taking over, like something spiritual, but it kind of frightened me. I thought you for thought a minute. You were like feeling it like you were in that. Yeah, I, I thought, yeah, I said for a minute, I thought, gee, am I having a heart attack or a stroke or something? And it wasn't. Then I realized, no, it was the presence of the Lord. And so not to fight it, I went along with it. So I closed my eyes and I'm in a seated position. Adele is sound asleep in the bed. And I feel like I'm going, I close my eyes and I feel my, my body going up like in an elevator when you push the button in an elevator yeah. and you, you, you go up. And I felt that sensation. So I thought to myself, I believe this is supernatural. So I'm not gonna fight it. I'm gonna go along with it. And I went up, 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 up. I don't know where I went, but it was out of that room. I'll tell you that. And then I heard this man's voice beginning to speak to me with a beautiful voice. And I questioned it in my mind. And I said in my mind, is this me talking? And then the voice said, no, Michael, it's me talking to you. I'm talking to you now. Mm -hmm. And I knew right then it was the Lord. So boy, I asked for it and I was getting it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he began to talk to me and he shared some things about my life and ministry. And then he said something very significant. He was to answer the desire of my heart. He was the answer, the yearning, and the thing that I was searching for to give direction and insight and fulfillment. He said, uh, with the ministry that I will give you, these were his exact words I'll never forget. With the ministry that I will give you, you cannot confine to the four walls of your church, for I will send you to the four corners of the earth to preach my gospel. Boy, I tell you, and then Conference was over. I started going down, 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 down. Now I'm back in the room, seeing the position, magazines in my hand, Adele's still asleep. It was so powerful that I'd gone to this conference seeking for direction, and the Lord personally gave it to me, and he spoke to me. And I, I didn't wake Adele up at that moment. It was She was asleep and was so sacred, so personal, that I thought, well, I'll tell her tomorrow. So the next morning when we got up, I told her, about the spiritual experience I'd had that night. And she believed me. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. Things began to change very quickly for us after that. I think you were always seeking and looking for that um, uh, power, the anointing power of the Holy yes, Spirit. Yes. Because in your heart, you really wanted to see signs, wonders, and miracles. Yes, right? I've always been fascinated with mm -hmm. signs, wonders, and miracles. And as a kid, of course, we always watched Oral Roberts on television, mm -hmm. praying for the sick, and I'm very, very impressed. And then I had the personal, uh, uh, the personal uh, opportunity to meet with Cap and to meet Captain Kuhlman and to have her ministered. She actually ministered and prophesied over me, which was very unusual. Mm -hmm. And so, can you tell and, us about what happened? Well, I was just newly ordained. I was just a young preacher, and I, I was uh, has been studying my Bible college. I, I enrolled in, the, in a course for the Bible college, and I was beginning to study. I was newly ordained in ministry, and uh, she came to the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles mm -hmm. at that time, <clears throat> which she did once a month uh, those years. And uh, she came out. Of course, the choir was singing. He touched me, and. Mm -hmm. He's the savior of my soul. I'll never forget those songs. It was three pastors she called out. Yeah, and so on the platform, behind the pulpit, she would allow the pastors to sit on the platform because at the shrine, the platform is quite large. There's a lot of room up there. So I sat, as a young minister, I sat with the others, and I was in the front row of that group right behind her. And so she started to minister to the crowd, and then she said, no, the Lord wants me to minister to three ministers on this platform. Well, she turned around and she called out three oh. middle middle aged mm -hmm. men, older men. I was just 22 years old, just a kid. And she prayed for them. And of course they went down in the power, you know, it was very powerful. And the crowd was very excited. Then she turned back to the audience to continue her message. And then she said, no, there's one more. And she turned around and she pointed right at me. 
it's you, young man, come up here. Well, I was, my parents were in the audience. They were, they were just in orbit, you know. I was devastated. And she came up and told me some beautiful things, how the Lord was going to use my ministry in the years to come, that it was going to be very unusual, and great things, and that sort of thing. And then she laid hands on me, and I went down in the power. But I never forgot that that experience, that encounter with Catherine Kuhlman, mm -hmm. because she had a great healing ministry, a great mm -hmm. anointing on her life. And it's, it was just uh, just uh, something to see and to behold. And I know that those great meetings, those that are watching today that may have been in some of those meetings, right. uh, could remember how great and how powerful they were. And I think that was the first time you experienced what? Well, it was the first time I experienced going down in the power Amen. of God. I'd I'd seen that happen before. People other in other ministries that would lay hands on people, they would go down. I kind of wondered about it, you know. But when this Catherine Kuhlman laid hands on me, all I remember was I was on the ground and they were picking me up. Mm -hmm. And she was just a slightly built older lady. There's no way, you know, in the natural she could do anything. But she had a tremendous anointing uh, on her life and on her ministry. Very, very very real and very powerful. You know, when I first uh, met you and uh, we were going together to different uh, evangelistic meetings, yeah. especially after we got married, mm -hmm. um, it seemed like you were always looking and yearning for something more and something greater. Yes. But you weren't exactly sure what that was. That's right. Um, Psalms 31, 1, 5, 5 says, My times are in thy hand. And it took a while. It but did. it's amazing it did. if you look back at the history, how everything worked together toward oh, yes. that moment when you were anointed by Brother Cirillo in oh, San yeah. Diego. Was it 1978? 1978. We went, we went to a more, mm -hmm. I had already seen Brother Cirillo minister out at Anaheim, and then he was going to have a, another conference in San Diego in that year, 1978. So we went. I was so excited when I saw the signs, wonders, and miracles in his ministry. And Brother Morris Rowe is one of the greatest preachers I've ever heard. He, uh, those that know him know how dynamic and powerful his preaching was. And, and then uh, operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I watched him and I would get very close to him during the prayer times on those platforms. As close as I could get because I was fascinated by the, by the power of God healing people and, and of all kinds of maladies and difficulties and bringing miraculous events right in front of you. You couldn't miss it. I was fascinated, and I began to covet those gifts and to be used in that manner. And I began to seek the Lord. Uh, as Paul said, ask for the best gifts. So when you had that experience in the Lord, and he told you you were going to go to the nations or the outside the four yeah. corners of the church, yeah. but you didn't know where you were going to go. That's right. After the Lord had come back, when we... Came back from that meeting. We had been prayed for and anointed by Brother Cirillo. And he mentioned something to us in the prayer line. Of course, he was telling everybody, just not just Adele and I. But, but he said that after this meeting, that after this conference, our lives and our ministry would never be the same again. Well, it tr turned out to be absolutely the truth. We went back to our little church. And I would just walk to the door. And people said, what happened to Pastor Mike? Uh -huh. he, he looks different. Well, I guess they saw the anointing on my life. He looks different. I felt different. And I knew something was had happened to me in that conference. And I'd got that, that word from the Lord, that direction that I was looking for. And it was very, very exciting. I saw now uh, what the calling was to be. It was to be and to have an international ministry which would preach the gospel. We would preach the gospel around the world. When we, when you came back, when we all, because of some of our church members went with us. Yes. And they also experienced the anointing. But when we brought it back to the church that Sunday, I noticed that your message changed. Yeah. And then you prayed for the sick. And what happened in our church was a very unusual. Well, we had a, we had people come up and we started seeing some healings take mm -hmm. place, uh, you know, and uh, already in the service. But the incredible thing was that before the service was over, everyone in our congregation had been slain in the power of God. They were on the ground. And they didn't even know and what that was. I had to stop and explain to them what was happening because mm -hmm. we never talked about it before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I knew about it. I believed in it. But we never really shared it with our congregation until that day. It changed our congregation uh, and our church ministry, too. 
at the same time. Amen. Well, so we came back to the church, but yeah. in the meantime, God showed you where to go because right after this little right. conference, where, or during the lunch break or something, we went and had lunch with Sister Lenny. Yeah. And then what happened to that? Well, what Sister happened? Lenny Bon Narciso is her name now. Uh, Sister Lenny uh, was a, a good friend. She was pastoring a, a church in LA, a Filipino American church. And we became very good friends. And uh, at that time, she and she was at the conference with us, with some of her, her church members. And they were all enjoying Brother Cirillo's ministry, as we all were. And and so I had been asking God direction. I told Sister Lenny about my experience in the Lord mm -hmm. and how I'd, I'd had this supernatural event happen, how the Lord spoke to me about our ministry. But I told her, but Sister Lenny, we don't know where to go. We didn't know where to start having an international ministry. And she said, oh, Brother Mike, why don't you come to the Philippines? She says, you know, my brother Eddie is just beginning his ministry, Eddie Villanueva, <laughs> just beginning his ministry. And I'll write to him and I'll, uh, I'll tell him about you. And, and I'm sure he'll help you coordinate your first international crusade in our small town in the Philippines in the town plaza and I'll write to him. I said, well, okay, Sister Lenny. But I said, well, I'll be I'll be in prayer. And I wasn't really sure if that was the right thing to do. I, I mean, I knew we were to go, but I didn't know where to go. Well, it's our first time to be it kind going of, overseas. We've never been there. I was kind of alarmed by it. <laughs> I said, well, let, let, me, let me pray about it. So anyway, uh, I went into prayer. Uh, we came back from the conference, and I, I took it very seriously. You know, God can work with us in a very, he does work with a very serious manner. And uh, so he did it with me, and I was very hungry for for the, to be used of God. As you said, to have something more. Mm -hmm. Some, there's got to be something more, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went into to prayer, and I brought it all before the Lord, the, the invitation uh, to the Philippines. And and I began to ask the Lord a lot of questions in the prayer closet. I want, I want to know this, 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 this. Well, I had a list of questions mm -hmm. that I'd asked the Lord in the prayer closet that nobody else knew about except me and God. Well, without my realizing it, a few weeks later, here comes a letter of invitation mm -hmm. from Brother Eddie Villanueva, who now is the president of, of the uh, G-I-J-I-L, Jesus Lord Fellowship, which now is in 70 nations around the world. And yes, one of the largest ministries on the earth. So he wrote to me, he was just beginning his ministry then. And, and he invited Adele and I to come to the Philippines and with his sister, and that he would help coordinate our first crusade uh, in the town plaza. So we, we did that. So, so uh, but the incredible thing was, and this is what really gets me every time, that in the body of the letter, and we had never spoken, we had never met Brother Eddie, he didn't know us, I didn't know him, but in the body of the letter was answered every question in detail that I'd asked the Lord in prayer. Every question was answered. And I held that letter up and I told the Lord, Adele and I, Lord, we'll go. I'm convinced we're gonna go and we'll represent you and we'll minister for you. Yeah. And that was back in 1979. And we've been traveling ever since. It's okay to ask God to confirm his mandate in yeah, your life. It's a mandate. It's yeah. okay to question if it's really of God or not. Because God will make sure that you know it's for him oh, for yeah. sure. And the amazing thing, we have a couple of minutes that God had prepared this way from the foundations of the world. Yes. And if you think about it, we knew Brother Bert and Sister Lenny way before. Yeah, like 19, several years before. 71, 72 is when we first met them. Mm -hmm. And at the time, they were praying for the salvation of Brother Eddie. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, I do. And then after that, we didn't really know them that well. But we went. you were called to be an evangelist at a little tiny church yeah. in Acton. And yeah. then what happened? Well, we went to the small church where <laughs> Sister Lenny and her husband, who had passed away a few years later, they were ministering there, and we had just met them. I didn't know this Filipino couple, and, uh, you know, I didn't really know them that well. Our friends, and brother and sister Ledbetter yeah, were yeah, close but, to them. Yeah, our good friends, they, they knew them, and they introduced us to Bert and Lenny. Uh -huh. So anyway, after I met them, we were in this meeting where they were, were ministering all together. Small church. Small church. And the Lord spoke to me, and I was looking at 
Sister Lenny and her husband, the Lord said, Michael, I want you to help them. Mm. Well, I thought to myself, Lord, how can I help them? I can't even help ourselves. <laughs> how am I going to be able to help them? We were them? newly wed, you know. Yeah. He was <laughs> well, we, help, we try to help them through encouraging, mm -hmm. praying for them, encouraging them, helping them. And, and so that's the kind of help we rendered. But I can tell you this, that in the years that would follow, it was Sister Lenny who helped us more than we helped her. So you see how God has a way of working because it was through her in her, her prayers and, her, and the direction that God gave her for us yes. that caused our international ministry to really take, take shape and get going and putting into action. But God at that time, I think, placed the mandate. Well, what, Pastor Mike, what do you think? Well, in our case, it was, it was Mark 16, 15, where Jesus told the disciples, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We have a worldwide call. And I, that was the thing I was looking for, that God was would take us beyond the four walls of our church, literally to the four corners of the earth, as he had said when I had that spiritual experience many years ago. Uh, God is a God of, of detail and design, as Morris Cirillo used to always say, and objectivity. And I believe that today, all these years later, the, the mandate still holds true, go into all the world and preach the gospel. There are many souls out there. You know, some people, they think, well, the world's getting kind of gospel hardened, or, the, mm -hmm. or some people have heard it before. They don't. Well, let me tell you, there's still a harvest of souls. Remember, Jesus told the disciples, Look on the fields of harvest are already white for harvest. So we have to take another look, don't we? That there are har there's a harvest of souls out there that have not yet heard the gospel who would be willing to accept the Lord if they knew that what the message was all about. Well, that's what we're called to do. That's the mandate we have is to proclaim the gospel of Christ all over the world to every nation, every tongue, and every tribe. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, Del and I have endeavored to do the last uh, 40, 41 years now, 42 years now, traveling the nations of the world. And God has been faithful, hasn't mm -hmm. he? All yes. these years, yeah. he's never failed us. He's never let us down, you know. So be encouraged, you that are viewing his, uh, here today. If God's dealing with your heart to do something great for God, don't be afraid. You step in by faith. You trust the Lord because he's in control. He's in charge of everything, of this universe, you know. And if he's put something in your heart to minister in some way or have some kind of a ministry, go in by faith. Don't hold back. Don't worry. You know, he has all the answers to all your questions. I can tell you that. because I used to have a lot of questions. I don't question like that too much anymore because I've learned now from experience to just trust the Lord because he's got it all planned out. He has the ultimate plan. So be encouraged. Be used by God and, and let the mandate come on your life. Amen. Be one of those that will see the harvest fields already ready to be reaped. So I know that there are some that are watching our um, program today and you're feeling that call to the harvest yes. fields. Amen. You don't need to have a big backing, a financial backer. You don't need to have a lot of people, you know, going with you or anything. If God calls you to go, he'll make a way yes. for you like he did for us. Yes. We didn't have financial means to go, but he supplied it. And you're going to hear about that in our next uh, segment. Oh, yes. But Get our book, Evangelism, the Responsibility of the Church in the 21st Century. We still have about, what, 80 years more to go right. before this century is over. <laughs> Amen. So yes. we're not going to be here, but you're going to be here. So we yeah. want you yeah. to carry on the legacy. So God bless you and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And God bless you real good.